Hey, how's it going? Bob Debu here for Open Studio. Today we're going to talk about intonation on the upright bass, the double bass. Um, so intonation is a big issue for uh, bass players, no matter what stage we're at. Okay, I've been playing bass for a fair, a fairly long time, um, but no matter where you're at in the development of your playing, uh, your musical development, whatever, intonation is always a thing that we have to consider. And I don't think anybody ever really like perfects it. We never play completely in tune. We can use devices like vibrato um, and other other things like that to to kind of mask some intonation issues. But basically intonation means playing in tune. There's a long conversation that we, we could have talking about temperament, equal, just, etc. There's a bunch of different ways to divide the octave. But what we're going to talk about is basically the situation that we would be in as a jazz bass player or playing almost with any other uh, genre of music with fixed pitch. So basically fixed pitch instrument means like a piano or a guitar or something fretted where they can't change or color the note like either a little bit sharp or a little bit flat like we could on the bass because we could do this right and as I raise up my left hand I shorten the string and of course the pitch goes higher if I just do that a little bit it just changes a little bit right so that's also a, a good thing to know because if we just change either a little bit higher or a little bit lower this way the direction I like to use my wrist for it I've seen people talk about uh, a great video online too talking about raising or lowering your elbow to change whether or not you're you know which direction you need to change the pitch but uh, for me I guess I do a little bit of that but it's a little bit more in the wrist so what we're looking for is as good as we can get with our intonation but don't freak out about it be peaceful with yourself you know like don't don't get super frustrated with it it's a process that takes years to really start to get good at so I have some exercises today only meant to help us get better in tune, some hacks that I'm calling it for, for our intonation. And it's going to focus on three different kind of concepts. It's really overarching with something called finger replacement, which I'll talk about in a minute. But we're going to talk about playing in unison, playing the same note while changing fingers. So we're going to play starting off with like a B flat with our fourth finger, second finger on B flat first finger on B flat and back and forth right back and forth we'll do that B flat B C and C sharp then we're gonna work on the chromatic scale using some finger replacement just two finger replacement exercises where we go in between first finger and second finger and then second finger and fourth finger and then we'll do an exercise based on whole steps uh, in A flat and then A natural and that will give us all of the notes I have to say on the upright bass especially in a jazz sense, we usually play pizzicato or with our fingers, right? But this, as you likely know, is really the equalizer. <laughs> We're going to hear our pitch much more clearly using the bow. I use a German bow. It does not matter whether you use French, German, whatever. And uh, if you're not experienced with it, that's okay. Find somebody to take a lesson with. There's great videos online too to kind of help show you how to hold the bow and the process uh, on how to play with it. I am not great with the bow, but I do practice it uh, with it at home a bunch with long tones, playing melodies. And um, you know, it's, it's a great tool for helping us to focus our intonation and our pitch. So let's get started by looking at the first exercise here. And this is something uh, that you can get the audio for audio from or audio for just click the link downstairs and I have tracks for you to practice along with as well as a PDF of what it is we're doing today and if you're interested in what we are doing here today check out the the base access pass here at open studio we practice stuff like this all of the time and uh, it's just a great resource I surely wish I had it when I was a young bass player or even now I check out the great courses by Christian McBride, Reuben Rogers, the Peter Martin Trio and just there's so much great information uh, on Open Studios page. That being said, let's get started. So the first exercise, I just want to talk about it before we actually do it. And again, you can practice this with the audio if you just download it. We're going to play B flat with fourth finger, B flat with second finger, B flat with first finger. We're going to go back to second finger and then do fourth finger again. We'll repeat that one more time and then we'll go to B do the same thing, then we'll go to C, do the same thing, C sharp, do the same thing. You could keep going, obviously, higher on the G string, uh, and also on the D string, the A string, and the E string, of course, 
but we don't have time for that in this video. So that's all we're going to be doing. I'm going to be using the bow, um, and uh, bear with me. I'm going to play stuff out of tune. I'm okay with that, you know what I mean? Because that's real. That's you know, I've been playing bass for a, a fairly long time, but I still play out of tune, and I just want to get better at it. So I'll be using my bow. It's important to know that we're not really interested in using any vibrato today. When we're walking bass lines or we're playing in two, we don't want to use vibrato for the most part. There's nothing saying you can't. It, you're the one playing bass. But for the most part, we're just looking for a solid uh, pitch that doesn't change or fluctuate. All right. Now, if you play out of tune and it's a long note, yeah, you can fix it a little bit. But um, uh, you know, don't, for the most part, play with vibrato, especially if you're walking or playing in two. Melodies are another story. You know? But for right now, we're just looking to pinpoint the, uh, the, the note without vibrato, using the bow, and doing the best we can. All right? So let's try it out. There's going to be four B flats in this track that are going to give us the tempo, and this is at 60 beats per minute. So try this with me. Two, three, here we go. So fourth finger. Now second finger, first finger. Back to second. If you notice yourself off, that's okay, just adjust. So there I started off a little high, back to second finger, back to fourth. And try not to look as you're doing this too, there's nothing to see. So as I'm doing this, trying to shift a little bit in my left hand, either up or down, very small, I'm going to C now, small shifts. Play on the tips of your fingers, and if you play out of tune, just smile, it doesn't matter. You'll get better at it. There we go. Feeling okay. Now the good thing about here we go C sharp. The good thing about doing this with the bow is when we go to pizzicato, it usually just feels way more in tune. It's a little easier to do. Remember no vibrato. There we go. Cool. Okay. So that is the first exercise. It's unison, as in we're playing the same pitch, finger replacement. So we're trying to just shift just enough to where we can get our fourth, then second, and then first finger going. We now try the exercise pizzicato, and it's going to feel way different. All right? So this next exercise is based on the chromatic scale, and we'll just be using our index and our middle finger, so one and two to play the chromatic scale. We're going to start on a G sharp, and we're going to do this all on the G string. We're going from G sharp up to G natural. Okay, You could, of course, again, go higher. You could play it on the different strings. We just are not doing that right now. So, But we're going to play G sharp with first finger, go to second finger on A, and then note where that A is. Try to get that in tune as quick as you can, because this moves along. You can definitely slow this down. But find that A, and then we're going to finger replace into the first finger. So we're going to play the A natural with second finger, and then go to A natural with our first finger. The next note's going to be B flat, and our hand is already set up to do that. B flat with second finger, B flat with first finger. Then, of course, you just keep going up. B natural with uh, second finger, B natural with first finger. And we're just going to keep going up and doing that. We're going to get up to G with second finger, and then we're going to start coming back down. So we'll do G, G flat, and then with the first finger, but this G flat we're going to replace with second finger. And you'll note that it's, it's a little tricky to do that, but the more we practice this, the more we're going to get this muscle memory and our ear memory too in tune. So let's try this exercise out. If you play a note out of tune, try to adjust just a little bit, otherwise just accept it and move on. You'll hit it next time in tune, okay? Let's try the exercise. Two. Here's G. 
repeat it. Here we go. Try to do this without looking at your fingerboard. There's nothing to see, right? There's no frets. tend to hit these notes sharp as I descend. Cool. Okay. So, again, it's way more evident any pitch issues coming from the left hand when you use the bow. If I were to do the same thing pizzicato, it would feel a little bit more comfortable. Helping to train my left hand to really get there, you know what I mean? So definitely encourage you to use the bow on this. Cool? So let's look at the next exercise. It's a variation on this chromatic scale, except now we're going to be using our second and our fourth finger, two and four. We're going to start on an A natural and do the same thing. Now when we get higher on the bass, we're not going to use our pinky. So um, when I get up to, say, about a, the F sharp, that's when I replace my fourth finger with my third finger. Some people do it a little sooner. Some people don't do it until you get above the G. It's just a personal preference, I think. If you're playing in tune and it sounds good and it feels good, then it is good. So it's up to you, right? Just my two cents on that. So let's try the same exercise. Well, well, let, we'll try this exercise where we're starting on A, and we'll do two, four, two, four, the finger replacement. Try it with me. So now the first finger is just coming along for the ride, right? But I am trying to keep it over the string, over the neck, not letting it fly out. I need to focus. practicing if you don't sound like terrible sometimes, right? Here we go, repeat it. Going up. Remember no vibrato if you can help it. So if you do an exercise like that daily, and especially if you slow it down, we're doing it a little bit faster today, uh, but just to get through the video. Um, if you slow that down, really try to find the pitch and then gradually increase your tempo and your range and the different strings, then you're going to have a better tactile feeling and a memory for where these notes are. That's the goal, okay? Let's look at the next exercise. This is based, instead of on half steps like a chromatic scale, this is based on whole steps. So basically we'll be playing the whole tone scale, meaning everything is a whole step ascending and descending. Uh, this would also work on particularly like the A flat augmented dominant seventh chord. We're gonna play A flat, the first finger, B flat with our pinky. Now we're gonna replace this B flat with our pinky to first finger on B flat and keep doing the same thing going up, right? Like this. So. Um, a thing that we can do as you're doing these finger replacement exercises too, if you do want to look, it's you know it's not the end of the world. You can look; it's your base. 
you can see where your pinky is, for instance, right here on this B flat. Now I notice that that's there, and my first finger, that's gonna be my goal. So you can use a visual landmark in that sense and look at it. But ultimately, you wanna be able to do that without looking. So I'm looking there. Now I know where a C is roughly, and I'll try to find that, and then I'll try to get there with my first finger, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let's try this exercise now. It's just going between first and fourth finger, whole steps, uh, whole step finger replacement, starting on A flat. So we'll go all the way up to an A flat, double that A flat, and come back down. Again, when you get higher, you can start using the third finger instead of pinky. Don't use your pinky on the A flat up there. Or do, I don't, you know, <laughs> you can. <laughs> Make sure it's in tune though. So here we go. We'll have four A flats, and then we'll start this exercise. Fun, right? <laughs> so we're putting in work when we do stuff like this, and but you, the more you do this, it's like weight training for the bass. You you get your intonation in tune uh, better and better. And again, it's just a process. Nobody masters this. I don't believe. Um, you know, there's amazing players, but you know, every we'd have to still fix that pitch sometimes. It's gonna happen. So just know that we're you know we're all on the same path, just trying to get better. And nobody really ever gets there. I think. Let's try the same exercise up a half step. And by doing this, we'll have hit all of the notes, actually, because there's only two whole tone scales, whatever. So but we're going to start on A now and do the same thing. You could, of course, keep going up higher and do it on uh, different strings as well. Slow this down, really check that you're, you're hitting the pitch accurately, uh, as accurately as you can. And if not, just slightly adjust. Maybe if you're flat, just raise up a little bit. And again, I, I kind of do it in my wrist. Just angle up a little bit. If you use your whole arm, I think that's a really drastic motion. But if it works for you, it works for you. It's cool with me. If you slide up and down like this, that's another option perhaps. But I'm just showing you how I think about it. Um, also, I didn't mention this, but don't try to slide into every note. Make sure you're not doing stuff like that, doing that real portamento. Sounds really kind of comical to do it. Um, but Make sure you're not sliding in every pitch. Try to hit the pitch and then adjust it if you need to. Or leave it where it's at and just accept it, all right? And, and know that you'll hit it the next time. So let's try this last one. Here's a whole step finger replacement exercise, first and fourth finger. Here we go. Okay, so cool. Again, if you're if you're not used to using the bow or don't use it as much, um, 
kind of like me. I, you know, I use it. I use it at home, but obviously, I still make mistakes with my speed and everything like that, and the pressure that I'm doing. But I'm trying to get better at it. That's the point. We're always trying to practice and get a little bit better daily if we can. And that's what these videos are all about, and that's what Open Studio is all about too. So these are just a few exercises to help with your intonation, little intonation hacks. Now I didn't mention, but the the biggest issue with intonation a lot of times is using the small intervals. So the unison one, obviously, we need to be able to match the same pitch. But then half steps and whole steps, if those don't really get ironed out and you get a good feel for those half steps and those whole steps, the bigger intervals are not really going to work either. Do you know what I mean? So really, really shed these smaller half steps, whole steps, and unison, of course, intervals as much as you can and get those under your fingers, in your ears, on your bass, and, uh, and everything will start to sound and feel more in tune. Cool. So this has been a lot of fun. Thanks for joining me. Happy practicing. One more time, my name is Bob Debu for Open Studio. Thanks for watching and take care. Peace.